What is up guys, Austin Richo here, back again doing more Marvel Legends, so continuing on with our set that we started last week of the Marvel Studios, the first 10 years of these Marvel Legends figures, and as you can see here, the first figure we're going to be looking at today, so we're going to, of course, go through and look at each set, and then we'll go through and look at all the figures individually, but this one is the Hulk and Hulkbuster set from Avengers Age of Ultron, so again, I like the kind of... It's hard to see them because the box is so big because these characters are so big. Um, but I like those kind of show off the box, but you can't really see like here on the side. This is number seven. So we went one through six last time. And this is time we're going to be going through seven through what I'm going to say is number 11. But they kind of don't have it labeled like that. But there we go. Avengers Age of Ultron poster there from 2015. And then we've got Hulk and Hulkbuster there. So that's the first set we're going to be looking at. Then we're going to be going to Ant-Man and the um, Yellow Jacket. I almost said Wasp. From the first Ant-Man movie, so that looks really cool there. Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket with the figures there. I like the, having the little tiny figures there as well. It looks pretty cool. So there we've got Ant-Man from 2015, number 8. There's the poster for Ant-Man, and then there's Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket pictures there. And then next up, we'll be going to Captain America and Crossbones from Captain America Civil War, which looks really cool. Um, excited for this Captain America and everything, so that's cool. And then we got a crossbone figure there for this is Captain America Civil War 2016, and the poster there, of course, with Captain America facing off against Iron Man, and then the two characters' information. Then from that, we're going to number 10, which is going to be from Modern Avengers Infinity War. What a good movie that was! And this, we've got Iron Man, Thanos, and Doctor Strange. Which is all really cool and super excited for this pack. So we got Iron Man Mark L, I guess is what that one's considered. And can't see the side because it's too long, but it's Avengers 2018 number 10. There we've got the Avengers poster there from 2018. Then we got Doctor Strange, Thanos, and the Iron Man Mark L. And then the last figure, which is kind of a last minute edition they made, so it's not really got a number, but I call it 11, is Ultron from Age of Ultron. So they, again, these are supposed to be like figures they never really made in the sets and so they're re like issuing them or whatever to go along with it so they would never made really a, a movie version of Ultron so they released this Ultron there and so there we got Age of Ultron 2015 and the poster once again that we saw and Ultron so we're going to be of course starting with the giant Hulk and Hulkbuster set which is ginormous so I wish I would have kept some of the other figures the measure size but as you can probably guess and as you can see they don't even fit into the camera um they're pretty huge so that's gonna be cool to get into it so let's start out with this one okay so first up here we've got number seven which again is from avengers age of ultron where we've got hulk fighting the hulk buster so we're gonna move hulk buster out of the way here and just look at the hulk here so this um is i guess a cool hulk i mean i overall don't like the look of it just because um of the way it is, I don't know, but I really like the Hulk in the Avengers movies and everything, so it's really cool to have a figure of him here. Um, but here, as you can see, we've got a raged out Hulk because if you remember the scene where he's fighting um, the Hulk Buster and everything, is when Scarlet Witch does the little like mind thing to his head. So, as you can see, he's got the red eyes and everything, so he's like bewitched and apparently. Um, seeing like bad things whatever so it's making him angry and just fight everything and so then like also gives him the veins so you can see the veins coming off of his head down his neck and then on his arms and everything there you can see the popping veins and everything so we've got a raged out angry Hulk here so there is a look at his head I really like the head and everything it, you can see like the mouth open and stuff and it just makes him look really angry and I like the hair and everything it reminds me a lot of um, the guy Mark Ruffalo that plays the Hulk and stuff even though he's in the Hulk form I still can see like resemblances and stuff of Mark Ruffalo which is, I like that they added that in there going down we've got his chest where you can see they added a bunch of lines to make like he's got hair on his chest and everything again you can see the veins on his arms that I mentioned he's got of course two fist hands because Hulk always needs fist hands because he's always punching everything uh, going down he's then in some pants so again I assume there's supposed to be some sort of uh, pants that uh, Tony's given him just because of the design and stuff they look like um, something that um, the Avengers would wear or Tony would give him and so probably pants that stretch with him maybe and you can see by the designs with the black lines and stuff that they're not just normal like blue jeans or anything and like I said probably some Tony has given him uh, to be able to move with him and stuff and then going down we've got his green feet looks like he's got capris on with the short legs and then his giant green feet and everything which um I guess they're cool. They look like actual feet, unlike the pepper pots from last week that looked really weird. You know, these actually look 
correct and fit and everything along with the character and our the proper size and everything for articulation we'll go and look so he's got the head movements where he can move his head side to side and just very little back and forth like not much at all uh then we've got a chest so like a kind of like an ab crunch but it's you know like a ball joint i'd probably say so you can move side to side and up and down because his waist doesn't twist at all for shoulder he does have the big ball as you can see there so um it can twist around a little and it's kind of clicking and stuff but it's got that and then can of course move up and down then we've got the bicep that can twist around and the elbow joint with the double elbow joint there as you can see and then twist uh wrist can twist around and do a little bit of flexing but because of the way they designed it with the what's supposed to be skin like coming down over it does limit his range of movement for the um as much as you can uh, bend his and flex his hand and everything. So that's the same on both sides. Again, no waist. He does have, of course, the um, hip joint here that can flex out and then, of course, uh, move forwards and backwards a little. It's kind of a weird movement joint overall. Then we do have the upper thigh that can twist around their double knee joint and then of course the foot can flex and rotate side to side um so he's got a lot of good movement and everything so it looks really good and nice and you can get him besides like his fist you can get him to pretty much pose a lot like different ways um the side though he can't like do very much side stuff because he doesn't have the waist and just this and so it's limited range so he doesn't move a whole lot but there's the Hulk, so now I'll bring in the Hulk Buster, which again looks really cool. So we did have the um, Build-A-Figure Hulk Buster, which was not nearly as big as this one is. But um, it's still pretty cool. I didn't grab it or anything to be able to show off alongside this. But here we've got the Hulk Buster, which of course is Iron Man's suit that he made to be able to fight against the Hulk and everything. And I can't remember it's been so long since i've seen age of ultron if he's inside this i know obviously in uh, avengers infinity war uh bruce is inside of the hulk buster because he can't get the hulk to come out for some reason so he is inside of the hulk buster but again i don't remember if iron man is in there or not but you can see he's got the head up here of course looks just like iron man said and it does have some movement and flexion there it can you know move back and forth turn on and all that sort of stuff but overall it's kind of weird i wish it was like flatter down and maybe even like attached to the head or something because it doesn't really need to move at all there's no reason for it um he has the same i guess pretty much the same movements as hulk so he does have you know like a crunch type thing which doesn't which can move very little it's not got a whole lot of movement it does do that weird little click and has a little bit of like just flexing it kind of just always goes right back it's just like a rubbery movement type stuff that keeps it pretty much straightforward um then we've got the arm so again the shoulder same sort of arm but of course you have this giant armor pad up here so um it kind of controls how high it can go and everything but it's still got pretty good movement it does have the bicep twist as well so you can twist the arm around oh and it can also rotate the shoulder i forgot about that too um we've got a single elbow joint here which is just the normal that moves back and forth and everything there and then little bit of wrist movement but because of this piece of armor it doesn't have much range um so not a whole lot of movement going on in there um unfortunately uh, then go down we do have the hip joints that just kind of flex in and out and back and forth as you can see there the thigh twister the knee joint which again i think is just a single it's hard to no i guess it does have some sort of additional movement so it's not a normal double knee joint but it does have some movement going along in there and then of course the foot that can flex back and forth and twist side to side with uh, again some limited range because of the design of the feet overall i really like this figure like it seems it reminds me though that they took like one of the other kids toys and just turned it into this because it seems a little bit odd and different but um it still looks really cool and it has all the same you know movements and stuff as a marvel legend but it just seems a little bit off to me and like i said it seems like an like an electronics kid toy they took the electronics out and made this and stuff but as you can see on the back there of course he's got the thruster stuff so he can fly and everything because this hulk uh hulk buster does fly and then again he's got all the armor so he can fight the hulk so he's got you know stuff that you can punch back at the hulk with and you know it shows him like the clashing of fists and stuff in the movie so that they can, he can like hold the blows off from the hulk and stuff as well 
um, which is really cool. So that's it for the Hulk and Hulk Buzz set. I'll just read the box here. Again, this is number seven from Avengers Age of Ultron from 2015. For Hulk Buzzer, it says, Having anticipated the need for a backup in situations involving the Gamma Green Goliath, Tony Stark creates Veronica, a Titan-sized suit of armor known more commonly as the Hulk Buster. And for Hulk says, Despite efforts to stay grounded, Bruce Banner falls captive to the mind games of Scarlet Witch and loses his temper, swirling into a blind, catastrophic rage. So that's that's it for the Hulk and Hulkbuster set. Next up is number 8, which is the Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket 2-pack from Ant-Man 2015. So we'll take a look here at Ant-Man first, and then Yellow Jacket, so we'll set Yellow Jacket aside there. So here's a look at Ant-Man, of course, in the Ant-Man costume, which again, I don't like this costume. I love the classic-looking Ant-Man costume from the comics and stuff. That's like my absolute favorite Ant-Man version, but this one, you know, is just what they chose to do in the movies and stuff, so we just have to deal with it. So he's in the red and black costume, of course, with silver all over, which you can see there on his face. He's got a pretty much all silver colored helmet. He's got the little mouth, I want to say breather, but it could also be the communicator for the ants and everything. He's got the eyes, of course, the red eyes with the red stripes on it, and the two little antennas coming off of his head again to help communicate with the ants and everything there. Um, he's got this thing around his neck. I don't know what's supposed to be if anything may really just some sort of breather stuff a part of the suit and everything and then of course we've got the suit of again with the red design you can see the detail they have it's got you know a little like cross design and stuff going in there which looks cool and then a solid uh, leather black on the other parts there and then of course he's got his belt going on which of course he hits the thing and he grow, you know shrinks down and everything it's getting grows back up again then he's got little shooters or I don't know, if, I guess he doesn't have the shooters. I don't know what the things on his wrist are supposed to be just besides part of the outfit. I know Wasp has a shooter, so I, that's why I was like, I know it's not him. Um, but he's got that, and you can see along the belt as well, all sorts of different little contraptions and stuff probably to help him grow. Then going down into the legs, we got more of the red striping and with the black leather. And you can see he's got the red calves there and then the red little, well, look like tees on top of his boots into the black leather boots there. Of course, he's all armor. It's got like padding and armor and stuff on it so he can, you know, help fight crime and everything. Um, so this Ant-Man figure has some issues. Like I can't really get him to stand without leaning forward. So it's like he's being all <laughs> kind of creepy and everything. And then his hands are like open like he's trying to like, crab at something or he's being shocked or something it's and he's like ah like all like tensing up and everything um so it's just kind of weird i don't understand what that's supposed to be for i feel he should have fist or just like an open grass pan or something it just looks kind of weird that that's the way they designed it um for movement though he's got the normal head movement so he can twist his head back and forth and nod he's got ab crunch there some normal shorter movements um bicep double elbow and of course the wrist he twists at the waist there. He's got the hip, upper thigh, which is kind of stiff, but it's there and working. Double knee. And then he doesn't twist anywhere on the feet, but he does have the actual foot flexion and then can twist side to side. But as I mentioned, he's got some issues standing up, so it's kind of a pain to get him to stand up again without like leaning forward or anything. So it's hard to get him. He's there kind of standing crooked, so I'll sit him aside. And here we've got Yellow Jacket now, which looks really cool. And so here we've got Yellow Jacket's face. So there's his version of mask. Um, so you can see the big giant yellow eyes and then a coating in between and underneath, which I thought you could see his face, but maybe it's under in those yellows that you can see his face. But I like the way that's designed and everything with the black helmet. So this is supposed to be a take on the Ant-Man design, you know, that Hank Pym did, but the new company is... Uh, taking control of it and trying to weaponize it of course even more so that's where we get this that shrinks down and can fly and all sorts of stuff um but then going in we've got the suit which is really cool so we've got the yellow design here which i don't know if you can see it it does have the honeycomb design which of course fits really well with a yellow jacket and stuff and all those sort of insects and everything um so i like the whole design of like all the yellow with the black like detail going in and out it looks really nice and pretty cool and stuff uh then we got so hands here again with the yellow on the like knuckles or fingers and stuff which looks cool so we got a fist hand and then just an open grass pan like, again this is what i thought ant-man should have but for some reason they gave him his weird hands going down into his legs again carrying on with the yellow and black all the way down to the feet where again it's got the yellow on there as well i just like the look of this overall then of course we got the big thing the backpack which does come off of him but we've got the backpack if i can get it back on there we go um of design which again is i believe what helps him fly be able to fly and stuff again i don't know what these are unless these are just kind of like 
um, the wings, maybe? I don't know what these would be. I remember them in the movie, but I don't remember what they do. Um, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, but then, of course, we've got the legs, which usually I thought in the movie were up here, but they would, like, shoot lasers. So they're supposed to be, of course, like the stingers for a wasp and everything, um, or a yellow jack in this case, you know, so they're stingers. So you can sting, and like I said, I believe they do shoot stuff in the movie as well. But they do have some flexion, so they can move back and forth on the backpack like this. And then they do... Um, have some twisting right here at this joint so they can twist around there and then they also can bend inwards and back this far and then in you know till they're hitting him so it does have some movement there's no other movement parts on these little claw or stabby things whatever stingers on him but um, it still looks really cool like this like I said though I think in the movie they're up high but you can only get them up that high and then they do um, like clash into each other on the back here lower but yeah you do have some movement out of them but it still looks really cool and just got to keep his backpack on now that's getting loose and everything so there's ant-man and yellow jacket there um for accessories we got a scott lang head so paul red's face here for ant-man so if you want to put that on instead of the helmeted version and then of course which is really cool we get little tiny versions of the characters so we have a little tiny ant-man here and a little tiny yellow jacket again there with the stingers coming out on yellow jacks so you can just stab at ant-man all you want they don't stand up though or at least i got the wasp to stand up really or yellow jacket to stand up really easily but i can't get ant-man and he's in like a sitting position almost probably supposed to be for like antony um the ant but you know there is no ant so i don't know exactly what's going on with that but yeah we got those two little figures as well so again this is number eight from ant-man from 2015 so for ant-man we got scott lang is enlisted by hank pym to suit up as ant-man and fight against competing forces intended to use the incredible shrinking pym particles for evil and then for yellow jacket we got the new lead of pym industries darren cross threatens to sell his highly weaponized yellow jacket suit to the criminal organization of hydra so there we go for the ant-man and yellow jacket set Next up, we've got number 9 from Captain America Civil War from 2016. We've got Captain America in Crossbones 2-pack. So we'll move Crossbones aside over here to look at Cap first. So here, of course, is Steve Rogers as Captain America in the suit he wore from that movie. And so there is a look at the head, of course. And the classic, you know, it's pretty much always the same sort of outfit. They barely change much of it, but they do change a little. Um, he is in a darker blue, which I, my favorite version which if you don't know about like from my channel and stuff captain america is my absolute favorite superhero and has been for over 10 years now so i'm um i really like captain america in all sorts of different forms but the lighter suit colors are my absolute favorite when they get darker i start to like not like them as much but i really like the lighter color version so there we've got his face of course with the a on it and the little wings off the side of his head he's got the chin strap of the helmet which i always am not a fan of i like the classic versions you know that cover his head completely you know and then like come around here of the head but of course they're trying to make it more realistic so that's the way it is as you can see on the back, we've got some issues going on. So it looks like they started to design the head and then put the helmet on. So it's got a cut here, which does not look good at all. And then it's got, you can see where his hair is there and then the straps and everything. So um, I see what they tried to do, but it's just not perfect. It needs to definitely be lower or move the hair up higher right at the line. Um, because that just looks really funny and weird like he's got a really bad haircut or something um, Then we've got his suit of course the red white and blue mostly blue suit He's got the silver star there on the chest. This is the same outfit. He wears in Avengers It's just all torn up and dirty So it's gotten rid of the star and then the white and everything down here is like dirty down and everything So it doesn't you don't see it as much um, then on the side we've got the Avengers logo there on his shoulder we've got the red stripes and on his arms it's got the brown leather gloves which again I don't like the brown leather that he keeps wearing but that's what they keep putting him in and then he does have these straps as well of course that go onto the holster here for his sh uh, shield in the back of the magnetic um, holder then we've got the red and white stripes there on his chest which again are always some of my favorite parts of Captain America's outfits then we got a belt on here so just a belt with you know pockets brown belt with pockets then he's got blue pants with the red stripes on the side going down into the brown leather boots there as well again I love the classic red boots that he wore in the original comics and stuff so those are always my favorite so there's Captain America so we'll sit him aside then we've got crossbones which looks really cool so again this is a version from the movie but you know based from the comics where he's got you know a skull looking face so it looks like a skull but this time it's just like a white 
um, like smattered all over. I don't know if it's paint or if it took like a rock and just like scratched at it and stuff because it would leave that sort of design. But again, it's supposed to look like a skull on his helmet there. And then we've got the crossbones that's normally on his chest. And the comics is just like, again, an X marked with like a stone again or something on his armor there. So he's got, he's all armored out, you know, like he's ready to, you know, fight definitely with guns and stuff so that's why he's got the what I assume to be bulletproof mask and everything there so and chest plate and everything so he's you know ready for fighting and everything so that mask looks really cool then going down he's got a you know this uh, bulletproof vest here with, again with all sorts of pockets it's got um, weapons and everything you can imagine it looks like a knife or something there and again it's just padded which looks like you can take it off from this little spot here yeah it looks like it's just buttoned on which of course it's come unbuttoned but it looks like you can't take it off if you want to just to have like a leather jacket or whatever on underneath and on the side you can see he's got these little um like pocket things on his shoulder so this side it looks like we got some extra holsters or not holsters uh magazines that's what i meant to say for guns and stuff then on this side it looks like we've got a knife and something and some extra rounds of bullets there then of course on his hands he's got these gloves which i don't know exactly what they're supposed to be i know he uses them so he can fight captain america like against the shield and stuff he can you know punch against it and everything and so he's got it they remind me though a lot of shocker's gloves from the um spider-man homecoming and so yeah, as you see he's got a hydraulic and stuff there for all that um which it and this it's pretty cheap it's just a piece of plastic that just sits on his hand so you can probably take it off if you wanted to and he just can grip onto it under there which neither hand was gripped when i opened this so i had to mess with it to get it then his hands all messed up i assume it it looks almost like they tried to glue this thing on but it didn't because it's got a lot of whiteness from glue and then a messed up spot which you probably can't see very well um but i they tried and so it looks cool enough and everything game again same on this side this hand looks much better though um on the inside doesn't look like it's tried to be glued or something like that uh, then going down we've got of course a belt then he's got some camo pants which may be hard to see they're real dark colored camo pants he's got another um hip holster here with a gun in it as you can see there doesn't come out or anything and then going down he's got more armor he's got knee pads and shin pads there with some armor there on his feet as well again he's ready to be in a big gun fight and everything for movement he does have the head movements um shoulders yeah doesn't seem limited his ab crunch if he has one you can't tell because of the vest and everything he does twist a little because of that he doesn't it looks like he's got a waist joint but he doesn't move or anything then of course the everything else is the same so just the vest that hinders his ab crunch there so there we've got both of those and then of course four accessories like for crossbones we've got his head so again looks like the actor and stuff you can see his damaged face from his first encounter with captain america in um winter soldier there and so he's, there's his haircut, so he's got his hair design there. And then his messed up eyes, which you can see under the mask there and stuff. So we got that head. And then we have an unmasked head for Captain America. So we've got Chris Evans' head here, which again with his blue eyes and everything there. So there's the Chris Evans head. And of course, since you have Captain America, you have to have the shield. And this is a cool shield. Of course, I have a bunch of Captain America figures. And so this, I'd have to say, is by far the coolest shield. Because I hate when they just have the weird hand hold thing, you know, where it's got the little peg that sits and they hold it. I like when it actually goes onto the arm and everything. So that looks really cool. And that's a nice looking shield and everything. So again, this is from Captain America Civil War from 2016. For Captain America, we got America's first super soldier. Captain America must decide if he stands by his government in the aftermath of the disastrous strike on Lagos, Nigeria. And then Crossbones, we got a Hydra agent and formal job agent of the S.H.I.E.L.D. Crossbones makes it his mission to take out Captain America no matter the loss of life at stake. And so that's it for number 9, the Captain America Crossbones set. Next up here is number 10, Avengers Infinity War. Of course, from 2018 this year. So we've got the Iron Man Mark L. Sue, the Thanos, and Doctor Strange. So this is a pretty cool set, but I do have some issues with it. So we'll move Doctor Strange and Thanos over to the side here and look at them in a minute. We'll start off with the Iron Man, and this is the our biggest problem with this set. So first off, we have Iron Man that does light up, so you can press this little center of his chest here, and his arc reactor thing does light up, which is pretty cool and stuff. He does have a switch here on the back, but I don't know what it does because I've switched it both ways and in the middle and everything, and I can't get it to not light up. So no matter what I do, it always lights up. But it just stays on for a couple seconds and then goes off, and it's got a battery pack and everything back 
back here. But I think that's what leads to the problems of this figure. This figure seems really cheap and hollow on the inside. So this, like, just the way this feels and the texture and, like, the movements of, like, when you shake and stuff reminds me of what would be, like, a $5 toy or something. Um, so that's kind of disappointing with that. It's a really cool suit and everything, but I just, you know, just for a light-up doesn't really need that or anything and make much sense so first off we got his head which does not look too good the way they've molded it together or put it together and stuff i thought maybe it came off and you would see you know tony stark's head underneath there but it doesn't it's just the way it's glued together and attached it does not look too good but he's got the blue what's supposed to be glowing eyes which would have been cool if you know if with this if they would have glowed as well but they don't but again this is his suit from the avengers which is his like nanotech suit so again it's um stuff um i forget if it's on, I forget where it is on him, but it's something and then he pushes it and then, you know, completely take, covers him up and everything. And it's got this extra, um, what look like eyes down here that's supposed to be, you know, part of his head. So, I don't know. It's just all weird and confusing from the movie. Um, but again, it's his nanotech. So we've got this, um, this, uh, gold color laid throughout, which of course is part of the red and gold classic Iron Man colors, which I like that. But then we've got these blue little nanotech things apart, like the arc reactor and stuff spread throughout. So again, there along his face, his eyes and stuff, then all over the side of his body down on his legs and everything we've got that blue which i like the blue added into it makes it look really cool but overall the figure is not that impressive i'm pretty sure we got a figure just like this from the um set from uh, avengers or infinity war but i don't remember it that much but you can see there are some color differences i don't know if you can see on the camera but up uh, like from the the thighs up he's like a darker red color where from the legs down he's a um, brighter red color so it's kind of weird that there are two different colors there but as you can see he's got the hands of shooting the uh like bolts or whatever i don't know what even lasers out of his hands i guess i don't know what he shoots out of his hands but he shoots the things um he doesn't have his thing on the back because in this movie he had the stuff on the back where he'd shoot get different like boosters and stuff or when he joined his feet together and then we able to fly up into the sky after Ebony Maul and stuff in the ship. Um, then he, from his knees down, he's pretty plain. He doesn't have any other design or colors added to him. He's just red from the waist down. Um, he stands pretty easily, so that's, I guess, kind of nice about this figure. So, yeah, not too bad. But for accessories for him, we do have some fists. So if you don't want to have the hand shooting lasers, you can have just two normal fists here. So you have those hand attachments. And then, of course, we do have the laser, so you can obviously just stick these in his hand. I do like the blue color compared to like, you know, orange or yellow ones that we've had in the past. I like the blue color that goes along with his nano technology and stuff. So that looks really nice and cool. So that's it for the Iron Man. So we'll set him aside and then we'll look at Thanos next, which is cool and doesn't really fit into the camera. We'll crunch him over here. So this is kind of interesting. So with this pack, if you remember, this was um, the scene because of this pack was from when they were on Titan. And so Thanos is home planet and Iron Man and the Guardians of the Galaxy, Spider-Man and Doctor Strange were all there and stuff trying to take a stop Thanos and um so that's what this in this room but if you look at his golly he's got all of the infinity stones so that means it's back when he's on wakanda because then he gets the uh, mind stone from or yeah the mind stone from um vision and so then he completes the gauntlet and everything but it looks like his eyes and stuff are from the scene you know on titan because like when mantis has got her hands on him and is like controlling his mind and then all of them are time trying to time down it looks like he makes this face and everything there and his eyes look all weird and stuff so it looks like he's possessed and stuff from that scene so um i don't really know what's going on like i said he should be missing the mind stone and technically the time stone because he doesn't get it yet at that point in time uh, but here we've got of course purple thanos which uh, looks cool i guess i really enjoyed him from the movie so there we've got his weird chin that's all like lined up and stuff he's got a bunch of butt chins all over his head and stuff and he's got it all scarred up face and everything from the fights and everything and then you've got his skin here again purple arms and everything with those lines continuing on that's just a part of his race and stuff um, then we've got an outfit again. It's a classic or a look or, or a take on his classic look um, of the dark blue and gold color there of his like outfit and stuff that he wears. And you can see it goes all the way down to his belt where he's got the um, dark blue and silver. I've got this little like piece of cloth that hangs off in the back. Then he's got the brown pants and his boots there with some armor and stuff on it. Then of course the Infinity Gauntlet, which is the most 
important part of the movie stuff with all of the stones. I was going to name them all, but I don't know if I could remember each one of them. Um, but yeah, it looks really cool. The gold gauntlet there. Of course, he just needs to make a snap and we'll all disappear. So that looks really cool. For accessories, he doesn't really come with anything besides a head. So he just got a classic, just normal straight faced head there. So if you didn't want him doing this weird grimace thing, you can get a normal head on him there instead if you want to do that. Oh, and you can see as tall as he is, he is much taller than either character. So Iron Man's taller than Doctor Strange and then he's much taller than both of them. So that's pretty cool that they did that. So we'll set him aside there. And now look at Doctor Strange, which has become, started to become one of another favorite character of mine from like the movies and playing um, games and stuff, the Lego game and stuff with him. So here's Doctor Strange, of course. Um, Benedict Cumberbatch, I want to make sure I got the name right. Pretty sure, yeah, it's the guy who plays him. Looking there, he's got his weird little mustache beard thingy. And then, of course, his hair sweeped over, I like, with his um, gray uh, strands there on the side stuff. Similar to what uh, Mr. Fantastic has. But then going down, I guess we can just start with his cloak. So that's next. His, of course, fun cloak that's in the movie. It always provides some laughs and stuff. It has, like, a mind of its own. But it's supposed to be, uh, obviously, clasps there. But it's kind of crooked because it's supposed to be, like, in action. So though it's kind of swept to the side and weird and stuff but I like the gold class there and you can see it's got the of course high color and then he's got what looks to be like a shoulder pad on that side but then it looks stitched together in different material stuff it's kind of like a patchwork quilt and stuff and then underneath which you can't take this off it just pops right off it's just got the hole that goes in the back and then just wraps around his neck but it's got some texture design in there that they pattern in there and stuff so it looks pretty cool and everything we'll leave that off for now um they going into the doctor strange he looks weird with really weird without it though next he's got on here on his necklace the eye of agamotto which of course has the time stone in it which he ends up giving to thanos um which of course could be all part of the plan you know, possibly his one um of the millions or whatever of possibilities for them to win and the only one could have been him just giving up the time stone would have been the only option don't really know but that's just a possibility um but then go we got his suit which is a dark blue with a light blue like cover or, over the course he's supposed to be sort of like monkish and stuff so he's got like really basic clothing and just like cloths and stuff wrapped around him but again he's got a leather piece here of a belt with some parts dangling down and stuff there into the dark blue pants and then brown or, or black uh, boots there with some buckles and stuff on him holding him on um then the next thing i guess the most notable part of course is his hand where he's doing one the time control part where you know he's got the time and he can twist his hand around like this and spin back time backwards and forwards and all that sort of stuff so i like how these are actually attached on there I like the attached ones better than just the little things you put in his hands and stuff. So I like that a lot that it's attached onto there. For accessories, he does have a hand that you can switch out. So he can have a like a grasping hand here instead of just the open one. And then that gives you this part, which again is kind of the things I don't like, but I think looks cool. And the, his shields, obviously, when he's being attacked, he puts his shield up and it blocks, you know, attacks and stuff. So that's really cool. So that's what you can have this hand for. So it actually holds the shield which i think would be much better and probably what i will put on so there you can actually hold on to the shield and everything there and so that um is pretty cool set like i said i wish like the iron man was better the thanos looks pretty cool i just wish he didn't have all the stones on his gauntlet yet since they're portraying it from the scene on titan and then the doctor strange cloak just has some issues and he has some issues standing up like i usually have to he's Looks, I think he's got like one leg shorter than the other, which um, doesn't help. I can't get this back in. Anyways, we'll just kind of stick it right there for now. So that's our set there for Iron Man, Thanos, and Doctor Strange. So from the box, of course, it's number 10 from Avengers Infinity War 2018. For Iron Man, Markel says, After being an integral part of the Avengers team from the start, Tony Stark finds himself divided from Earth's mightiest heroes, but now faced with an imminent deadly threat unlike any he has ever encountered. Stark will be forced to call upon some familiar faces and battle alongside some new allies. Then for Thanos, we've got the Avengers are brought face to face with the cunning, intelligent, and fierce warlord Thanos, a ruthless cosmic threat consumed by saving the universe from itself. To stop him, the Avengers must join forces and bring him down, this villain who will stop at nothing to collect 
collect the six Infinity Stones. And for Dr. Strange says, as Dr. Stephen Strange gets accustomed to his new role as the guardian of the Sanctum Sanctorum and sworn protector of the Eye of Agamotto, this master of the mystic arts will soon discover how much further his universe will expand when the cosmos are in jeopardy. So there we've got the Iron Man, Thanos, and Dr. Strange pack. And our last figure here is Ultron from the Age of Ultron. And again, I'm calling this number 11. The box isn't labeled as that or anything. But because this was the last one they released and everything, I'm just going to call it number 11. So here we've got Ultron again from the Age of Ultron movie. So that's what he looks like from the movie. Just a bunch of... I forget if he's Vibranium and... I'm, I, he's not in man. I don't know if he's Vibranium or not. I know he can be destroyed or he gets destroyed. So he may not be vibrating i don't really know for sure i just know he's made of um some sort of weird metal and stuff from the movie again it's been so well, such a long time since or such a while since i've seen um of age of ultron and stuff so i don't remember but anyway so there's a look at his face there again he's all robotic created by tony stark and bruce banner um trying to be a savior but it turns out evil and everything when being controlled um there's not really a whole lot to look at he's just a robot like it's hard to like talk about anything about him he's not like special suit wise or anything nothing special he's just a robot but i guess we'll look at there's his head there which does of course have the normal head movements and stuff and he's got the arms that can you know bend up and down and they rotate around he's got the bicep it's double elbow joint he's got the hand moves there he's a really tall figure by the way he's the same height as the hulk from earlier so he is tall again same on that side he does have an ab crunch i didn't think he would but he does have a small little ab crunch there he twists at the waist as you can clearly see i like his like ribs there and stuff you can see the inside with the red he does have the of course the hip movement there which can go out to a little bit and back and forth he doesn't have any thigh twist but he does have a weird double knee joint that's got this piece covering it which i think is cool but yeah, it's kind of real stiff and everything and then he's got a foot so it can move back and forth and a little bit to the side he's got you know two toes there toe and then some other toes there on the side so it's a weird combination stuff he he's got a lot of movement though but so it makes him hard to stand up because it's hard to get him to stand up and everything but again there's not much that i really know to talk about on ultron there's a look at the back of him and stuff it looks really nice but again it feels does feel kind of cheap similar to that iron man but i don't really know like it's still to me got good quality it just doesn't feel correct or anything but from the box again the avengers age of ultron 2015 says ultron originally designed to be a peacekeeper ultron broke rank and took his cardinal mission to the extreme determining that the only way to true peace in the world would be eliminate humankind and secede all power to technology so that's going to be it for ultron so that's going to be it for this set where we did number seven through what i'm calling 11 of the marvel studios first 10 year set of marvel legends figures. so i hope you enjoyed these two videos videos of going through the entire set of the 10 year set so i hope you enjoyed if you did let me know in the comments down below what set was your favorite out of the entire collection which figures did you like most which ones did you not agree with me maybe that this iron man was probably the worst one out of the set just because of its design or anything let me know anything you have down below don't forget to leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see more marvel legends videos every time new sets come out we do them on here so i hope you enjoyed thank you for watching and we will see you next time